If you value your digital media, then you have to get one of these. This right here is a NAS, and that stands for Network Attached Storage. This device right here is essential for backing up all of your personal information that you don't wanna lose in case of a drive failure. In this video today, we're gonna to be talking about what a NAS is, why you should get one, and what features it offers. Because in addition to storing data, there is so much more that this device can do. This Synology NAS has its own operating system that will allow you to run things like an email server, virtual machines, photo backups from your computer and your phone. You can also set up folders to automatically sync to this device, create user accounts, and then decide which users are going to get access to which folders on your NAS. On top of that, you can also set up a Plex media server to run this thing as a server. There's so much that you can do with this device. It is absolutely unbelievable. That is what we're gonna be talking about in today's video, so stay tuned. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Now, even though Synology is not sponsoring this video, I do wanna thank them for sending out all the hardware that we're gonna be covering in this video for me to review. Now, I have been a Synology customer for years now. In fact, I looked up when I bought my initial Synology NAS, and it was 11 years ago, and this thing is still running 11 years later. This is a two-bay NAS. Synology sells a ton of different device sizes. You can go two bays, four bays, five bays, eight bays, and even if you wanna go a full-blown server rack, you have that option too. But in this video today, we are gonna be taking a look at this guy right here. This is the DS923 Plus. It is a four bay drive, meaning that it's got four hard drives inside of this. Now there's a lot more to it than that, but first the question I wanna answer is, what is a NAS? So this right here is an external storage drive. So typically when you run out of hard drive space on your computer or laptop, you plug one of these in, transfer all your data over, and that way it gives you some extra room on your device. But there is only one hard drive in here, one single point of failure. If this hard drive goes down, all of that data is lost. Definitely not a situation that you wanna find yourself in, but that's where the benefit of a NAS comes in. So this right here, four bay NAS. This thing is essentially an external hard drive, but instead of plugging into your computer, this actually plugs into your home network. So you're gonna plug this directly into your switch or your router. Now, if you're not familiar with either one of those, I did a video that talks about setting up the basics for a home network. We go through all of that stuff. I will link it up here for you guys to check out and at the end of this video if you want a refresher or just maybe make sure that you're setting up your home network correctly. But by plugging this into your home network, that means anything that is connected to your home network, whether it's a mobile phone, multiple computers, laptops, anything connected to your home network can actually access the hard drive here. So an additional benefit to a Synology NAS is that you can access this outside of your home network too. Whether you wanna access it from maybe your mobile phone or computer, say you're on a vacation, you need to get some data off of here, or you can actually set up user accounts for other people to access this device too, which is great for small business use. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, a NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. In this drive right here, I have got four hard drives. Now you don't have to fill up all those drives if you bought this right here and you just wanted to start out with filling up two drives in here, you could do that too. But for me, I filled everything out. We've got four full hard drives in here. Now, what you're gonna do when you set something like this up is you're gonna set up what's called a RAID. There are several different RAID configurations that you can do. RAID one is a popular one where it is going to mirror the disks in there, which is something that I had done with my two bay drive. I have two drives in here and I wanted them to mirror each other, meaning if one of the drives fails, the other drive is still there and is a backup. My setup that I did here with this four bay drive is I set up a RAID five, which means that it's going to save the data across all four drives. Now, if one of these drives fails, I can pull it out, put a new drive in there, and the remaining three good drives in there will rebuild that fourth drive. Essentially, it does this by reserving about 25% of a drive for duplicate data. So for example, if I have four 10 terabyte drives in here, I should get 40 terabytes of storage, but I'm actually only getting 30 terabytes of storage. Now that puts redundancy on all of the drives, to allow one of them to fail without me actually losing any information. So why do you need a NAS? Now, for most people out there, the biggest thing that they are going to want to save is their family's digital media. So 
videos, pictures, anything that you have that you just cannot afford to lose, this is gonna be a good place to put it. Now, I know there are a lot of other options out there as far as like Google Drives or Apple's iCloud, and there's lots of other cloud services that you can upload your stuff to to keep it safe, but that stuff is gonna have a monthly charge, especially if it gets too big. Now, for me, running a small business out of the house with a YouTube channel, I've got a lot of data that needs to be stored and backed up, which is why I have something like this with a four bay NAS. Now, this thing can get pretty expensive depending on how many drives you're gonna put inside of it. And this is a great solution for a small business. If you are just going to be saving documents, folders, pictures, videos, you may not need to go as something as extreme as this one. You can always just get a two bay NAS. Get something like this, two bays in it, set up that RAID 1 where they're going to mirror each other, meaning if one drive fails, you can always pull it out, put it in, and the second drive will duplicate itself on there. So you can always afford to have one drive fail. If you set up like that, that's gonna be much cheaper and affordable if that is all you need it for. But if you want to take full advantage of what Synology offers, then I'd recommend going a little bit bigger than what you think you need. And that is because in addition for most people using this for external storage, it's essentially a mini server. Like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are so many different things that you can run on here. You can create an email server on here. You can set up a Plex media server, essentially storing additional things on here. You can upload your DVD library on here and be able to access it from anywhere in the house or even create users outside the house to be able to access this and watch movies if they wanna do that. But that's all stuff we'll get into a little bit later with the features. The next thing that I wanna cover is the hardware. So this is a four bay NAS drive. We've got each of the slots right here. What you can do is to put the drives in, you're gonna lift up on the top, pull these out and your drives will be inside here. Slide those in. Let's go ahead and get that slid in and locked in. And then we've also got a key lock right here. Here is what the keys look like to lock these guys up so that way nobody can open up these drives. We got a power button. We have a USB three up here on the front. Flipping it over to the back. Let's take a look right here. We've got our two fans. We have got dual RJ45s. So these are each a gig. Uh, we've got our expansion slot because you can add an additional five drives to this. You can add a five bay drive to this to make it a total of nine drives that you can have on here. This device right here can support 54 terabytes. And if you expand the additional bay, so a total of nine drives, you can have 126 terabytes on this guy right here. We've got our power in, we've got an expansion slot right here, so you can actually have 10 gig ethernet on here if you wanna do that. We've got another USB three on the back, and then we've got a Kensington lock back here. If we take a look on the bottom of this thing, we have got slots here for our M.2 drive. So you have the expandable slots for M.2, which in fact, we are going to be installing those on this drive right here, but yeah, that is what the drive looks like. The drives that we're gonna be putting into this thing, let me move this off to the side. We are gonna be putting in these Seagate Iron Wolf eight terabyte drives. So I have four of these drives right here that we're going to be putting into this. We also have a couple of other devices right here. So we've got the Synology 400 gig M.2 drive. I've actually got two of these that we'll be putting into it. So we're gonna max that out right there. And then we've also got their memory here. So each one of these, this is the 16 gig DDR4 RAM. We've got two of these. We're gonna bump it up to the max out at 32 gig. So we're gonna get this thing fully loaded and ready to go because this thing is gonna be a beast of a server. So what I wanna do first is, uh, let's go ahead and install the M.2 drives on here. So we'll lay that down. The cool thing about these M.2 drives is that we don't need any kind of hardware to get them installed. They are just going to snap in. That is going to be these drives right here. So let's open this up, get these drives popped in. Okay. All right, drive number two on there, just as easy as that. And we're gonna go ahead and just close these guys up. Boom, pretty easy to do to get that installed. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna install the RAM on here. So we're gonna pull these out. So pull all of these trays out because the RAM is going to be inside on the side here. So we're gonna get that pulled out. And then right here on the side, you can see in here are gonna be our RAM slots. So it comes with four gigs already. We're gonna pop that one out. 
Now this one was not easy to get in there, so this one is gonna take some time, but here is the four gig RAM that comes with it. We're gonna be installing our two 16 gig sticks. So I've got both of those right here. All right, so what I needed to do to make sure is I needed to, let's see if we can get a closer look for you. I needed to make sure that that was pushed down in so I did not see the little ribbon sticking up above in there. Hopefully that's a better idea. So I had to push it down in there and now we can just push it in, snap it into place. Looks good. Okay, I'll show you guys a close up. So now that that's in there, I need to push down. So now that it's in there and then push back. All right, that one is now in there too, perfect. So we're gonna go ahead also and install our drives right here. So like I mentioned, we have got eight terabyte drives that we're gonna be installing into this. Now it does have um, inserts on the side that are going to pop out. We're gonna slide these guys in right here. So we have those in there and then the brackets that go in on the side here have little pegs that are sticking up on the sides. You can see those, that is going to hold this guy in place. We're gonna go ahead, pop those in there. It's gonna go into the holes that are in the side of your drive. If we take a look right here, we see our screw holes on the side. It's going to fit into those and hold it. It does have rubber inside here. So that is rubber that is going to help with vibrations. All right, that one is all snapped in. That is what it looks like. Should be nice and flush in there. Those holes are going in the side and then we're gonna go ahead, get the rest of these done and stick these drives in. Okay, all our drives are done. Let's set these guys off to the side here. And we are just going to slide them right here into the side. So great thing about this drive right here, all these drives are hot swappable. Lock it in. Pop that guy in there. Last one right here, get in the slot. Good to go. Um, here is the power that it comes with. It is a 100 watt power supply, so this is power brick that it does come with. It also comes with uh, two network cables. And then like I mentioned, we've got the locks right here and uh, we are all set. We've also got the quick start guide. All right, so now we get to the fun stuff and we get to see what the Synology NAS offers. Now, if we take a look right here, this is the Synology DSM, which stands for their Disk Station Manager. This is essentially the Synology operating system. Down here in the corner, we see that we have got our system health that we can take a look at right here. Below that, we have got our resource monitor. So over here on the left, we have got some different icons. Control panel is one where we can go in and control the different settings of the device. If we click on users and groups right here, I can set up different user profiles and give them access to different things. For example, I've got my wife and I set up on here. And the cool thing about this too, is I've also set up a family group. So we have a family group that has my wife and I in it. So now when I set up different things, I can give access to the family and everyone who's in that family group will have access to it. So I don't need to go through individual people. I can do it by groups, which is something that I really like to do. It doesn't really matter too much right now, which is my wife and I, but as the kids get older, it'll be nice to just put them in a family group like that. We've also got shared folders. So in here, I can set up these different shared folders and be able to access them from any computer in the house and outside of the house. At the very top here, I've got my active projects. This is one that I'm gonna start using for doing my YouTube videos. So I can save everything locally to this folder right here, and it's gonna save it to the NAS, and then I can access it from my laptop if I'm traveling. I'll have access to this folder, and any updates that I do will automatically get updated to the NAS and saved there, not locally on the laptop. Let's close out of this and go to something that's pretty cool. We got Package Center here. This is all the different apps that you can use and install on the Synology. So the first one that I wanna point out, let's scroll down here, is this one, the Synology Photos. So this is going to replace Google Photos for me. If you're not familiar with Google Photos, it essentially takes everything on my phone, uploads it to the cloud, and then it saves it locally there. The problem with Google Photos is that it doesn't save it at full quality anymore, and I'm constantly running out of space. So I'm either having to buy more space or delete photos. I don't wanna delete photos, so I've been slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger with the amount of cloud storage that I'm purchasing. Now I don't have to do that. I don't have to spend any kind of money. My phone can actually access all of that on my NAS. So if you take a look here, I've got Photos Mobile. That is going to be the access to my photo library. Everything on my phone is automatically getting uploaded to the NAS. And now I can access all of that data whenever I want to. I can scroll and go through everything and there's a little button here where I can scroll all the way down. I can go all the way down to 2012 and then all the way back up. I can easily just go through anything that I wanna do. Let's see here, let's go 
here when the kids were young. I can go through and watch videos. I can look at pictures everything I have access to. My wife and I love doing that where we're talking about something that we maybe don't have on our phones anymore. I can quickly access it that way. And it's not up in the cloud. I don't have to worry about losing it someday. It's all backed up locally on the NAS. That is the big thing. And one of the things that I love the most about this setup right here is all of my photos are saved there. I can access them from any device that I want to with this app. Let's go ahead and jump back in. I'm gonna close out of, actually let's back out of here and take a look at some other things. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. We've got a Plex Media Server. So you can set this up, upload all of your DVDs that you have to this, and it's gonna give you a really cool website that you can go to and look at all of the movies that you have uploaded, that you own. Maybe you've got a giant DVD library. You can get them all on here, store them on the NAS, and access them anywhere that you are. You're gonna set up a user account, give that person a name and password, and then they go to the website, log in, they're good to go. So it can be, you know, maybe your parents or friends friends or anybody, you can have other people access this too if you would like to share that feature. Some other things that I wanted to point out on here, we've got virtual machines. So I do have a virtual machine set up on here that I use to open up and check all of my emails. I actually have two of them. We've got an Ubuntu one and then I've got the Windows 10 one. I tried out Ubuntu, wasn't really a fan of it, but I run the Windows 10 one all the time. That's where I check and go through all my emails because I don't want a virus on the computer behind me like fellow YouTuber Paul Hibbert had where he lost everything on his YouTube channel channel because he opened up an attachment on the wrong email. Don't want that to happen to me. So I've got the virtual machine set up where I check all of my emails on there. All right, we have got surveillance stations. So if you have got security cameras around your house, they might have the ability to connect to your NAS and be able to save everything locally here. So no more paying for cloud storage with Ring or Arlo or any other service. This can record 24 seven on your NAS and you can check that at any time. So another cool one that I'd like to dive deeper into. And then the last one here that I wanted to talk about is this hyper backup. So this is not only going to back up all the PCs and mobile devices around your house, but another cool thing that this feature can do is that it can give you some redundancy in your data savings. So having a NAS in your house, it's not 100% foolproof. If there's a fire, if there's any other kind of act of God that might destroy the NAS completely, you might be out of luck. But if you set up this hyper backup, you can purchase a second NAS and actually link it to that second NAS that you have offsite. So for me, I actually do have two NASs. I'm gonna send one to my parents, that's about an hour away, and I'm gonna set it up over there. I'm gonna set up this hyper backup and everything that I store locally onto my NAS here in this house is automatically gonna get backed up over on the NAS at my parents' house. So I do have some redundancy in different locations and that is all free and part of the Synology service. So I know this is a super long video. These are just some of the things that you can do with this NAS because not only is it a data backup external hard drive solution, but like I said, it's essentially a mini server. There are so many options that you can do with this device. Maybe not things that you're using right now, but you can look to in the future. If you are a small business owner, this to me is a must have. I would highly recommend picking up one of these devices and building it out. Well, if you guys have any questions about this Synology device, leave it in the comments below. I will do my best to answer those for you. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you guys in the next video.